Good evening, good evening, good evening. It looks like we are set. It looks like I should have sound. I actually have a lot of notes for today, something I usually don't do. I do want to discuss a lot of things because I learned a lot of things on a video I posted yesterday. Most people haven't a clue on how the cart works. So we're going to talk about the cart because far too many people do not understand a lot of stuff about the cart. I've had a lot of people post all kinds of things that just aren't true. Um, we're going to get into that. Um, I've got some things on the phone app because the phone app was brought up quite a few times. One other thing too, I posted, I even stated in this video that I usually take a lot of hate for those types of videos. I am extremely passionate about reselling. That is where I make our money at. I'm a YouTuber on the side. That is it. I am a reseller first and foremost and always have been. Anybody who's run into me in public and now there's quite a few people that have, no, I'm a reseller. I don't, I'm not a big fan of being seen in public. This is totally different. So uh, anything I'm saying in a video, I truly, honestly believe what I'm saying based on me being in retail for 30 plus years. Um, I've been on eBay for 25 years. I, I'm not trying to make anything light and I, I, I it, it's just awful when people come out and attack me and say all sorts of different things. I had to delete, I think it's up to 11 with cuss words at me in that video from yesterday, which is just, just, I, I got thick skin so I could care less, but I want to stress this for those who don't watch my channel very much. We have three stores. I only share the most easily shareable store because most of the stuff in my vintage and collectible store you aren't going to find the exact same thing. It doesn't give me competition. I pay my bills. I feed my kids. I pay for medical expenses for my kids and myself through reselling. I, I, I don't give out information on other items. I don't give out NOS. I don't give out wholesale items we sell. I sell everything. I'll tell you what I don't sell. I don't sell clothing. We used to for years. And I never had the returns or the unpaid items like everybody's complaining about. I'm surprised that so many people attacked me over that aspect of it based on you know the fact that I've sold all this stuff. And the only thing I don't sell again is I don't sell clothing. Unless it's like a vintage shirt from like the 50s or before, embroidered shirt or concert shirts. I do buy leather jackets. I collect leather jackets. I got like 60 now, all vintage leather. I don't sell any high-end electronics as a whole piece. If I get a, a high-end electronics, it's usually something broken that I will take apart and sell the parts. The only other thing that I do not sell, the only other thing that I do not sell would be video game systems unless they are vintage, like Atari or maybe a vintage Nintendo. I don't mess with PS3s, PS4s, any of that new stuff. I don't mess with that at all. I only sell the games. Everything else I sell down to, in fact, uh, in Patreon, you'll get to see a case of something I got. I, I, I buy heavy stuff too. People are accusing me of only selling paper. I sell 25 pound dumbbells all of the time. I've got cases of them here. So you'll see some tomorrow for those in Patreon, but I sell everything of any weight imaginable if there's money to be made in it. I just don't share the information because if I did, everybody around here would be buying it before I could ever get to it. So again, I'm a reseller. If I, if I wasn't a reseller, I would just give out everything and who cares? I don't make my money from people buying stuff from my store. I don't promote my store. I don't even post a link to my store, any of my stores. There's two people on YouTube who know at least one more of my stores and that's it. And somebody, there's two people that I trust very, very well. I, I, I'm not an advertiser. I'm not sitting here trying to rip anybody off for money. I don't, I have a Patreon that's the, the most expensive thing in there is like $9.99. And I put a lot of effort into that. Last week I had four videos up. I try to post stuff throughout there. I'm not just trying to scam somebody. I don't do courses. I don't do any of that other stuff. What I say I'm very passionate about, again, because this is how I feed my kids. A lot of people understand that. And uh, it's sad that a lot of people don't. But a lot of people who are in dire need reach out to me. A lot of people, people with kids that they can barely afford to feed, people that rely on this business to pay every single one of their expenses, to, to supply them with gas to get their kids to school and stuff like that. That is the type of people that I actually talk to almost on a daily basis. I, it's, it's, 
nobody, nobody, you can't just look at a video and say, well, this is what this guy does. I don't judge anybody for what they do or what they are. If you state something that's wrong, that's a different story. So anyway, uh, uh, there's like 11, I think, that I had to delete just for foul language in that last video, which again, it is just totally insane because I sell everything but those three things. I just don't talk about them. It, it's crazy. What do people think I do the rest of the time? I'm not doing collectibles. I'm selling other stuff. Uh, well, I've talked about going to the mall and buying things. I don't sell those on eBay. Name one. I sell them on Amazon and other places like that. We have a Walmart account for crying out loud. You think I'm selling antiques on Walmart? No, not really. You can, but but I'm not selling antiques on Walmart. I assure you of that. Um, but anyway, let's move on to some topics here. Patreon video. I did have a, a car issue out of town at a recycler, so I did lose some time. Your video will be up in the morning, but I did post um, a whole bunch of photos from a multi-purchase from one buyer, one of three we had just today. Um, and I would recommend you look at it. I've got a lot of content. There's, I don't know, a couple thousand words below it. I've, I went into some detail on some other things like that. We're going to talk about a lot of the stuff that's going on. Um, one other thing I'd like to spit out here, too, is that I have no intention on leaving eBay. I'm, I'm, I've said that before. I've never, ever told anybody to jump platform. My only recommendation is to broaden your reach and don't put all of your eggs in one basket. For those who don't follow what uh, I look into the financials of companies. I look at who's running them. I research them. I check them out. I see where they've worked before. I look into their work history. I go to Wall Street Journal or, or a couple other major places and look and see what was said about these people ahead of time or years back. I know a lot of people say, that's stupid. What are you doing that for? You don't do that and all this stuff. I have an invested interest in eBay doing well. The people that, that directly contact me have a vested interest in eBay doing well. Uh, again, that's my only goal. I love the eBay platform. I just don't like those running it. So uh, the, the CEO, if you're unaware, could care less about low-valued buyers. They don't advertise to people that sell what we sell or, or to, to buyers. Most everybody out there, probably their advertising was cut off by eBay because they're not advertising. He only wants to sell $500 items, $600 items, $1,000 items. You can hear him say that himself if you'd like to go and watch the interview from this past third quarter when eBay lost 10% of the sales on the platform. Every other site is up like 10%. So eBay's 20% down going into the first day of fourth quarter. So does eBay need to get their stuff together to help the people that help provide them stuff to sell? Yes. So for me to go out and, and just ignore the fact that this happens to people that can't feed their kids because they their work is closed down because of what's going on and I'm trying to help them, I, I, my only goal is to help people. People think you make a fortune doing videos. My videos don't get a ton of views. I don't make a fortune. I could not live off what I make off of YouTube in the slightest, even if I was single. So uh, again... I'm not out to get anybody's money off of this. You watch my videos, great. But I am passionate about what I do, so I do talk a lot about it. I don't always edit my videos, so the time I personally spend doing a video may only be 15 or 20 minutes for a 10-minute video. So I'm not out there trying to crank out or, or screw somebody over or give you bad advice. I've tried to research the advice or research what I'm going to talk about in depth. I go and I read articles. I read read what the CEO says himself. If, if you watch the video I was talking about when they announced the pay-per-click, the example that eBay gives that you would spend on a daily basis with $600 in advertising. Nothing they are doing is geared towards the small seller because we are called low-value sellers. The people who buy from us are low-valued buyers, and they don't want those. He wants the guy that's going to spend $600 on, on a ThinkPad or whatever the heck he was talking about and then buy $6,000 more. Now, he just made that up. There's no way on earth that they know that a person's going to come back, even if they have the records, because their stuff is so screwed up right now. Again, my only goal would be for eBay to do better. 
I, I don't understand why people wouldn't get that because if I only sold on one site, my life would be so much easier than worrying about other sites and cross-listing and Shopify and everything else. It, it would be great if eBay listened to everybody, but all I honestly see this is another form of a money grab to steer the company the way Amazon and Walmart are. Walmart does not allow anybody, obviously, to get something and walk out the door without leaving a charge card or something on the counter. So again, Walmart is, is the guy who's running the site is from Walmart. And I know people say, well, he used to work at eBay. Well, he hasn't worked at eBay in a very long time. And he wasn't some high ranking running the company type of person back then. So again, I'm not here to just bash eBay like everybody says. My goal is for eBay to wake up and fix this, this stuff. The last report I saw said around 40% of revenue was coming from collectibles and secondhand goods. So that means mostly cheaper, low-valued items, and they are not promoting it. His actual statement in that interview was, we've given the, the sellers now coupons so they can promote and encourage return business. They are not advertising for people buying $40 and $50 items anymore. They are only going after high-valued buyers. Word for word, what the CEO said. He's telling you that the people that are only buying $10, $15, $20, dollar items are low valued buyers which is an insulting statement in my book it's all about wall street you just watch his interview and see for yourself i swear if anybody watches that i can't see how you'd come up with any other conclusion by him cutting off advertising and all this other stuff so I'm not trying to wreck or ruin anything. I am passionate about what I do. I would love to just have been on one site. I would love that eBay was 100% of my revenue and everything was wonderful, but it's less than 40% because of these actions. When 10% of the business is gone, and they should actually be 10% up based on every other person in the same genre of selling platforms, in reselling platforms in general, something is wrong with what's going on. They do not know. They're floundering in the wind right now like the wacky waving arm guy. That's what they are doing. You can see it for yourself. I would not be surprised if it further dips at the end of fourth quarter. Because so many people right this second, I have probably can account for several thousand people in the last three videos that have commented or text message or anything else that their sales have dropped off a cliff since the 12th, including ourselves. Until the 28th, my sales were gone. We lost thousands of dollars because of eBay cutting off the viewer, cutting off the ability to see our items. I think that's a very serious issue. Anybody whose items aren't being shown and is forced to spend time day after day, every day of the week to sell similar instead of listing new items is feeling the pain. Those are the people who the majority of them watch or talk to me on these videos. So if, if, if talking and trying to stress how hurt people are is wrong, I don't know what's right then. So anyway, let's, let's move on here. Let's talk about the cart for just a minute here. No seller on all of eBay can see a buyer's cart. Never have, never can. So when people are telling me they just combine shipping in the cart for the buyers and they can do the best offers through the cart, that is not true. You cannot accept a best offer by checking out in the cart. What happens when you check out in the cart with anything, even if there's best offers pending on those listings, is that the buyer is going to pay the full cost and does not get the best offer price. It doesn't work that way. It never has. You can check it out yourself. It does not work that way at all. So you should honestly know how the cart works if you're going to be using it or suggesting that you can use it to uh, combine or do anything. And sending a buyer an offer of something that's in the cart, they have to take the item out of the cart to accept the offer. And then it's forced to purchase it. So again, when people are telling me this, and I had dozens of people tell me stuff like that, it doesn't work like that. I'm not trying to be offensive. I'm, I'm, I, I just I despise having to do videos like this. I would rather do videos talking about antiques. I say it all the time. Again, even in yesterday's video before I got attacked by 11 nasty people, I stated in there that these videos I usually get get kickback from. The the videos saying stuff like that give me no 
nothing good but pain. So, you know, I've got thick skin. I'm not worried about what they say. It's just annoying because I'm trying to put out good data and people just, just don't understand how the site itself works. I've been on the site since pretty much day one. Your, your goal as a seller on any platform should be to know the entire site, buyer side especially. Now, I had a lot of people attack me and say that the sellers matter more than the buyers. Every single retail establishment on the globe worries more about the buyers for a very good reason. They've spent tens of millions of dollars in tests and studies to figure out the best way to keep their buyers in. And, and that's the, the, the one goal. If there's 100,000 buyers, uh, sellers of selling everything they they want on eBay. But the buyers are turned off by all this stuff that's going on. The buyers relieve, but those sa same 100,000 sellers will still be there with less people buying from, which is what's happening now because of the 10% stated loss in revenue. So uh, again, customer service is number one. It always is. Why do I sell more than somebody else? I go out of the way. Why do I state that, hey, buyers aren't going to like this? Because I talk to my buyers for crying out loud. I've, we've emailed people about items that the wife wanted, Weebles, and all kinds of stuff. Only half of the people have ever responded to my messages to people. I give up sometimes. I, never, I just go to someone else. And that's what's going to happen when a buyer has an issue. How many buyers just don't email you because other people have the same item? Or other people have better feedback. Or other people do things like combine and all this other aspects of it. Your feedback, your, your customer service is the only way to get repeat business. You're just some, you're, you're, you're not a, a store on eBay if they're only buying one thing from you. They don't know you from anything. You're just an eBay seller. They don't even probably know your name, even if you put a card in there. Anytime anybody's ever put a card in, in something, unless it's a very specific collectible, it goes in the garbage. I don't even look at it. And most people I know could care less about that. There's no brand loyalty anymore unless you create it. I, I go the extra mile to talk to my people. That's why I have a 30-day payment policy for some people. And my standard payment policy is seven days. Because I know it gets me more sales, and I don't have it. If you constantly are in conversation and the people you know are buying from you, I'm talking about buyers. These aren't people off YouTube. I never encourage or tell anybody to buy stuff off YouTube. I don't do videos to get you to buy my stuff. That's not what I've ever done. And you can look at any one of my videos. There is never a spot for my store name in there. I show it in videos, so if you want to know it, you can watch. I don't hide it. I just don't display it because I'm not trying to get anybody to buy my stuff. You know, who wants buttons from, from who knows when? Who wants this? Who wants that? Occasionally, people do buy stuff, but that is never my goal. So anyway, the goal is to make eBay better. The goal is for people to understand how things work. So when something arises, they can understand the implications of what eBay may be doing. You may think, well, I never have combined shipping. I never have people buying more than one item. There's a reason. There is honestly a reason. I can probably tell you about 75 or 80% of the people that I directly interact with as resellers will get repeat business when they reach out to customers and offer them and talk to them and answer their emails immediately and that kind of stuff. It's a factual statement. A lot, The vast majority of people will get repeat business if they stay in contact, they reach out, thanks for the purchase, hey, you know, if you ever need something similar, blah, blah, blah. You've got all the opportunity. You've got basically an instant way to contact somebody who's already already bought something from you. So it, 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 it pains that nobody goes the extra mile to talk to their customers. Why do I know, why am I saying that people are going to be turned off by being forced to buy immediately? Nobody who said those comments even looked at the boards out there, the discussion boards. The, the vast majority of every comment that I saw was from a buyer. The first person who brought this to anybody's attention was a buyer. The second person, the third person, the fourth person, the Reddits I've seen are all buyers complaining. Uh, again, I do have occasionally, very rarely, unpaid items. I can tell you one thing, though, I did have was when I did clothing, I had a ton of unpaid items and as well a ton of people with returns. You know what I did to fix that? I stopped selling clothing. I looked at my business. Where am I falling at? It doesn't matter what you sell. It doesn't matter at all. I know some people can only get clothing. It's great for a start because I did it for several years. If you looked at my store, went back, you'll see me showing clothing that I sourced. So I'm not like making that up. I sold uh, two lots of 
like hundreds of pieces. We sold thousands of pieces of clothing when we decided to give it up just to other resellers. Some of it we gave away and donated and stuff like that. My life has been so much easier since I gave that stuff up. I just figured out how to go somewhere else. I never knew all the other stuff I'm selling until I decided that this isn't working for me and I tried to figure something else out. I'm no genius in everything. I know customer service though, like the back of my hand. I was a regional manager. We, we handled a lot of stuff. My region was over $11 million a year and I had to control every single dime of that. So, you know, I understand how customer service works from the bottom up. You know, I understand all the aspects because I want to understand them. I've read books on it for crying out loud when I didn't have to. Who wants to read a book on, say, um, uh, customer service 101 that's three, 400 pages? Most people won't even read it. You know, who's going to take a college? Most people out there who are resellers right this very second are missing a key opportunity. You could probably take a college class, get it funded on business, just one class, one single class, two nights a week, and you would completely understand how business works and how to set yourself up, how to connect with banking and all this sort of thing. And it would probably be paid for through the Small Business Administration. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have to get credit for it. You'd only go to one class. And, and I mean, there's been a few people who've done that because I suggested it and they have never had the, the, the worries or, or the issues that they had before they took that class. I, I, I only want the best for people out there because I don't know why people would think that I would do great by giving out bad information or trying to deceive or mis, mislead somebody and need to, to cuss me out in every other word in the book. They're not going to get posted on the channel first. I don't even read them once I see the first or couple or first or second words, some nasty word. I could care less what they have to say. If you're going to be that attitude when I'm trying to help somebody. And again, go back to the, the single mom who's got two kids who's trying to make a living doing this. Those are the people who are going to be worried. Those are the same people that see that their money isn't coming back in since the 12th and all these other things. So take it what you want. I, I don't really care if somebody hates what I have to say because... Again, this is my, I do this for a living. This, this, this is why I've got a roof over my head, cars in the driveway, and, and medical expenses are, are through the roof. So uh, trust me, I, I'm, I'm in it with everybody else. I didn't start off with, you know, you know, millions of dollars worth of inventory. I started off with nothing, just like everybody else. I just, I just don't give up. I don't, uh, I'm going to figure it out. If I've got to read books, if I've got to go the extra mile when I'm not sourcing or, going places I would never think about. That's how I found stuff. I just drove around when I first started and I would stop at some, I, I bought stuff from shoe stores. I bought stuff from restaurants. I bought stuff from a meat market for crying out loud, costume shops. I love costume shops. Costume shops are awesome places. If you ever see a local costume store going out of business and you don't go there, you're crazy. Just one, I, I, we bought some, um, uh, they were uh, masters, graduate uh, robes with sashes. Paid ten bucks a piece for them. All of those are like a hundred and sixty bucks a piece, all from a costume store who should have known better. So uh, again, th there's a lot of opportunity. If you're having problems with certain items, slowly work out of those categories. If you're getting a ton of unpaid items, slowly work out of those categories. If you're having a massive amount of returns, I've had people tell me that like one in, or two out of 10 items are returned or one or two out of 10 items aren't paid for. I'm not gonna sell those categories because the, the aggravation and the stress on your life is far more um, dangerous to you, in my opinion, than, than worrying about a few extra bucks. Yes, yes, I know money's tight for a lot of people. I personally would rather rough it a little longer and not have to deal with the aggravation. I, I, the whole reason I'm out of working for somebody else is because of the aggravation, because of all the stress, because of, of not being able to do things the way I see the best, best route out of there. I didn't get to where I'm at by making, by screwing everything up or not knowing what I'm doing. Again, it's not a brag. Everybody, sh if you're at this point, should know how the whole thing works. You know, and it might take you years to get to that point. It took us three full years to get everything, every single aspect to figure out how to do this, to figure out where to find that, to figure out, 
you know, the best sourcing ways where people aren't going to be looking for stuff, the best place to get wholesale, how to hook up with the bank so the bank can give you a letter of or can give the buyer a letter of guarantee. I can buy $5,000 worth of merchandise without putting a single dime down on the merchandise with the letter of guarantee from my bank and not have to pay for that $5,000 worth of merchandise for 30 days. Meaning the day I get it, I could probably sell enough to recoup my costs and never be out a dime out of my pocket to purchase that merchandise from a wholesaler because I know how to hook it up with a bank to get a letter of guarantee. Look it up on Chrome if you don't know what a letter of guarantee is. A letter of guarantee is a note from the bank that says I'm in good standing, I have enough to cover it, and if something happens to me, the bank will cover the loss of the person I'm purchasing the product from. You only can do that if you're in good, you have a good report with the bank, you, you, you intentionally do certain activities with the bank so that you can have these sorts of options. Who, who out there would love to be able to get $5,000 worth of merchandise that you know will sell without having $5,000? You can do it even if you don't have that much money in the bank if you've got a good standing and can show that you're an established business. The first time you get a letter of guarantee and it works out great, you'll get another one. Look it up. Look it up. Again, this is something you'd learn in like a, a basic business class. You know, so uh, again, it, it's customer service back down to that. I hate to come back to customer service, but man, when 50% of the people we email message won't respond, I'm going to go somewhere else. Who, who? There's a lot of people who tell me they never answer questions from buyers because most of the time it's just BS and they're not going to buy the item anyway. I would probably say, and I'm going to, this is, this is, I, I would say a legit, honest to God, 75% at least buy the item after they have questions. The only ones that don't, it usually comes down to price. And what I usually do, what if they don't contact me and don't purchase in a few days, send them an email and say, hey, I'd be, I'm, I'm always open to offers on any, any uh, listing with the best offer feature. You know, who knows, I may take your offer. Just send them a note a couple days later. You've got, in a traditional business, you've got to wait for somebody to come in, into your establishment. With, with somebody emailing you, you don't have to wait. They're right there in front of you. All you've got to do is be the salesperson, be friendly with them, ask some questions, give them some personal information. Yeah, we've been collecting these for years, just selling some. If there's something else you're interested in, maybe I have it or I have it and I just haven't listed it yet. Just let me know. Man, there's so many other ways that you can use the customer service aspect on eBay to do what I do and get return repeat customers. The first thing I ever hear when, when somebody says they never have repeat customers is how many times do you talk to your buyers? Well, I don't. It's, they, they buy the item, they pay for it, and I send it out. You're missing your opportunities. People pay just for lists of names and numbers of people interested in certain things. You can... When you get a business license in most cities and most states in this country, your business license information is public information. What, what happens is you'll find accountants, and you'll, you'll see them in every state. I promise you this happens to, to most people when they get an LLC, if not for sure when they get a, a S Corp, is accountants will call you or send you some notices and say, hey, we'd like to offer you a few free consultation. You know, Maybe you'd be interested in our service. They bought your name from the city. You can go down and buy names from the city too, just FYI. You know, a lot of people don't know these aspects of it. This this is what you, this is the type of knowledge that's going to get you pretty far. This is the type of knowledge that I've used, not I'm not it's not a brag, I've just delved into it. I I've been doing this for 25 plus years. This is what everybody out there who's been doing this for a long time usually knows. It's not just me, I'm not something special. Again, I had zero listings on one day. You know? But anyway, I know I know that that's kind of like just a, um, a complaint to some extent, but buyers matter more than anything else. You could have a million sellers on there. If no buyers are going to the site because the site's so screwed up or they can't find what they're looking for, it doesn't matter what you're trying to sell or how great of a seller you may be. If they're not there, they're not there. You've you got to have the buyers. So, And that's the whole reason why the feedback was created in the first place. If Most people don't even know what five star comes from. Five Star is a customer service that was, it was created like, uh, I'll, I can probably give you a pretty good date, around 90 or 91, Five Star was a, a, um, 
a thought that some company came out with and then they market it to other businesses and now every business has a five-star basis for customer service it's it was created i was there one not there and who created but i was in the industry i was working for somebody at that time before it was there and then the next day when it was there i'm like what the heck is this but but again there's people spent millions of dollars to create stuff like that and far too many people i research all this stuff i am so uh, I've got I've got some issues. I'm sure I'm on the spectrum, and I'm not. It's not trying to belittle anything. I'm sure I've got uh, low level autism. If you've heard me speak, you can see I'm not. I, I bounce around. I, I talk a lot and stuff. There's there's other things, but I, I'm nothing special to to in my own opinion. I'm not trying to coerce anybody anything it, it customer service is what matters that's the number one thing that i i think i give to everybody i try to at least than, than most other people do and, and i because i've worked in customer service for most of my life my first job was working in in well i had two jobs at the same time i worked for a magazine then i also worked at a movie theater greenwood cinema but anyway let's see here Again, I, I'm t I've talked about some of these things here. Again, best way to get repeat customers is to talk to your customers. Best way to know how you're doing or what you could do to sell more items is talk to your customers. I, I, I just don't get it. I just don't get why people don't do that. Send them emails. There's nothing against that on eBay's rules because they're a buyer from you. Send them out a couple days after the fact and just let them know that you're open to offers at any point. If they don't make that sale and they reached out to you and you answered their question. Maybe they were looking for something else and you just haven't listed that something else. Gosh, there's just so many ways that people blow that aspect of it. Or don't get it, or think I'm just talking out, uh, you know, out my butt, or something else like that. It's not BS. It's true. It works that way. That's why eBay handles it that way, at least used to, and that's why most companies do it that way. Lee Hayes, one. Well, well, thank you very kindly for the eight dollars super chat. I honestly and sincerely thank you on that. Uh, thanks for you buying you the next beverage, honey. Well, thank you very kindly. Not needed again. I I never call out. Hey, give me some 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 super chats i honestly don't even think about it that's i'm in my own little world when i'm out here talking again i i'm able to zone out and only think about reselling uh, if something breaks or i need to do something i don't stop till it's done i don't eat i don't do anything i just do it because i'm so fixated and obsessed with what what i'm doing i gotta get it done nobody you don't have to do that way to, to be successful that's just i'm stuck with these these obvious ticks anybody who watches my videos knows um and just like uh, the other thing that I hear, I've used to hear a lot on was, why are you constantly blinking? I've got eye issues, and I always hate to say that, but I, I heard again somebody saying, you blink too much, stop blinking, and what the heck's wrong with you? I've got an eye issue. I, I've got vertical diplopia with blur. It means I've got double vision in one eye that never goes away. Uh, it's it's always something on. Watch some of my older videos, and you can see me just blinking all over the place again I, I i i've got medical issues this pays for my medical expenses this pays for my son's heart related issues I, I i'm not here for playing games i'm here strictly business i do store reviews i do all kinds of stuff for for people the best i can but anyway tiffany thomas well well thank you thank you thank you for for the the super chat as well greatly greatly appreciated again uh again i'm sorry i don't look at the feed half the time and i know people complain about that too um this is me i'm stuck with how i am you know it, it, it's mentally impossible for me to, to change certain things i know i've got an ocd and many other things again that's why i can't stop doing stuff it's it's a tick i, I can't control certain things so I don't usually talk about that. I don't like even even putting that out there. But, you know, when you get attacked with the nastiness that I see on videos about eBay, again, I have to think some of it's coming from people who work at eBay. I write for the people they attacked. So I write for the people that six ex-eBay employees are going to federal jail over right now. So, again, in... I've had nothing but good experiences and, and the best wishes for Ina and her husband as well. Um, it's just sad that people are like this. So if, if you think I'm, I'm being harsh on eBay or always going after eBay, I know the people they attacked. I talked to her. I just talked to her yesterday. Um, you know, I, I have a, a connection with that because I was attacked the same time she was from one of my videos that was shown in one of her her articles 
So, you know, I still have uh, 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 the, 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 the thinking that eBay knew I was, knew something about it, or possibly knew, because I talked to eBay in person on a, on a conference call back then, and even brought that up, and the look I got from him didn't make sense until it was found out and released later on after the, C, the last CEO was forced to step down over this. So I'm not here to bash eBay. This is all towards the people running it, the idiots that they keep hiring and running it. I'm sorry, the last guy was forced out. This guy doesn't know what he's doing. He's in over his head. They're not worrying about small buyers. There isn't a company on this planet that I can think of that would blow off small-time buyers. Every buyer is important. Low-value buyers is an insulting statement. I would be shocked if the majority of buyers who would be considered a low-value buyer wouldn't be offended by that comment. But again, on Wall Street, the, the interviews he gives, those people are fine with describing people as low-valued people, basically. A buyer is a person, so you're saying they're low-valued people. Again, maybe that's twisting it a little bit, but if you look up the definition in the book, it's a person. The person is the one buying it. So it's offensive to me. Um... Again, I know I get trolls too, so I'm not worried about that. Um, again, I told you what I don't sell. That's the only things I don't sell. The only things I don't sell. Shit, I, I, was, I, I cussed. I know I don't do that. We've sold rims with tires mounted and mailed them with the rim and the tire exposed, unwrapped, because you can do that with the post office if you didn't know that. Those are heavy. I sell, you name it, I've sold body parts. I've sold a hood to a car. We've crated stuff up and had it picked up by a semi-truck in front of our house. We've had pallets delivered to our house. You don't buy vintage pallets. You know, I've bought out stores before, bookstores, stamp stores, all kinds of stuff like that. You name it, I've sold it. I've sold a half million dollar Prevo. And look that up. Look up what a Prevo is. It's a motorhome for like a touring motorhome. I don't care what it is. I will sell it if there's money invested. I may not show it, but I will sell it. Um, let's see here. Uh, for Crystal, I think. Well, a uh, Crystal, yes, you are free and clear to do whatever you want with it. It is yours free, open and clear, except to make copies of it. Um, let's see. I think I've already... Candice, I did post back to that. Daryl... Um, I did respond on that with the price. I, I gave you two actual examples that sold to show you. Um, let's see. There's a couple other folks that had a couple. There's a couple other folks I responded to on Patreon as well, too. Everything was responded to as of an hour before live show. I will be on tomorrow morning and posting a video um, going in in-depth. You get to see some screenshots from my back of the house that I usually don't show anybody. It's nothing major, super secret, but you'll get to see a little more insight on, on thoughts and stuff tomorrow morning. Um, let's see here. We've done the cart. Um, let, let's talk one more time about the cart. Most buyers don't use it. I've had a lot of people say, well, just tell the buyer to do this, tell the buyer to do that. If, if you got to go into two, two, three paragraphs to tell a buyer how to buy from you, they're not going to buy from you. Every, there's a, there's a Rick and Morty episode. And I don't, I haven't watched any of them in a, in a little while. I don't watch TV much anymore at all. Vision issues, but, um, that's talking about, there's an app that somebody, would you like to create my app? And, um, with the, the app, the minute a, a paywall shows up, everybody leaves the app and the app crashes. The minute you put a paywall, which is what immediate payment is, people leave a certain percentage. Maybe it's not huge. Maybe you won't necessarily be affected by it, but a certain amount of population on the platform, whether it's 10 or 15%, will be. And if those 10 or 15% leave, eBay won't just be losing 10%. They may be losing 20 or 25%. And just because those people may only buy certain things for me, people also buy clothing. Most resellers, they lost 5% of the resellers minimum. I've seen the numbers. You can compare. It's like thousands, tens of thousands of resellers left eBay in third quarter those resellers buy off the platform or used to i should say so when resellers leave they don't buy off the platform they buy off the other platforms that they move to when a buyer leaves the site they usually don't come back you know and again people say well you can only get certain things on ebay i would say these days that's only about 10 percent true these days because there's there's a lot of niche sites out there that people just don't have a clue on. Everybody tells me there's only like four and five major sites. Yeah, maybe bigger size sites, but there's a heck of a lot of smaller sites. 
and the smaller sites are specialized so they do get all the people that you would want to buy your items from them there's another site out there that's probably got more items than ebay called dellcamp.net and they sell pretty much everything too but it's a european site and, and nobody even thinks or knows about that site i know personally people that do far better on Dell Camp selling some of their collectibles than they ever did on eBay because the amount of buyers is way more there's more postcards on Dell Camp than there are on eBay so again and I bet you probably 90% of the people watching this have never heard of Dell Camp so uh, you know if you don't investigate, you don't dig into stuff, you're not going to find all that information. Not to bring Ina and in, in e-commerce bites in, but she's had articles on a lot of that stuff up there. Some of the stuff I've learned, I've learned from watching her site and reading her articles for like a decade, long before I've ever been on, on YouTube. So I've always read stuff off of that platform, her her blog post. Again, I'm not, I'm not getting anything to tell you that. That's just a fact. You've heard me talk about it years ago. You've heard Dom and Primetime Treasure and a lot of the other people people bringing up the articles and stuff from there not just mine or anything but just in general because she spends her time and investigates it she wants to give good information i have not seen and again i'm not trying to defend her because i i write for her but i would say this to anybody even if i didn't do that i've not seen anything misleading or otherwise making up stuff ever everything i've seen has been down to the truthful aspect of she gets sued eBay couldn't sue her because everything she was saying was true. So instead of suing her, they sent a bunch of, of execs, including the head of all of global security, flew secretly and, and were trying to break into her house. And they sent her disgusting things. And I mean, that's the type of people we are dealing with. Not, not the help desk people, not the people that even work on IT. They've got bosses. It's none of the low level people's faults what's going on at all. Even the IT staff, everybody blames the IT staff. They can only do what eBay tells them to do. If eBay isn't willing to swap out and still use dated stuff that was introduced 20 plus years ago, that's not the IT's fault. Most, I've got an IT degree. Most places you go to, even around here where I, I, I live, like a factory, all the servers and computer technology at a factory, I see Windows 95 still in use at those types of places all the time. I do. I, I volunteer a little bit for for a church group, and I do a few other things. I do all their IT work. I, I've talked about. I don't charge. It's, it's just it's just something I do because the money goes to a good cause. Um, there's even a little thrift store that I always volunteer to help them anytime they need it locally. I've even run into two of uh, my subscribers at that thrift store. So you're maybe you're watching. I don't know, but. I know how it works. You're going to see old technology because it's far too expensive in many cases, or they're just cheap and don't want to do it. When you get to a certain point, you have to dump the whole system, and, and I don't think eBay's bright enough or would spend the money on it. They had they they blew 5.1 billion buying their own stock back instead of doing that. So so again, this is why I have issues with what they're doing. The, the, the management i don't have any any ill harm towards anybody there at all even the management i did their cities and shouldn't be there so again this is a business we're talking business language we're talking this is your business life this is how you pay your bills probably if you're watching this video again I, i'm a youtuber third i'm not even that that's it, it's it's family and then reselling and then then maybe Art probably comes in their, their third, and then it's probably YouTube fourth, maybe. I don't know. But I'm not out here as, as, as a, uh, hey, give me your money. I, I, I'm a full-time reseller, just like everybody else. I put the majority of all my labor into reselling. You know, take it how you want. But I don't have 30-plus thousand items just on one of my three stores without being uh, fully invested in, in into my business. Uh, it, it would make no sense. I couldn't have millions of dollars of stuff up online if I didn't do that. You, you can't be some not a reseller, some fake reseller, and have millions of dollars worth of stuff up online. You know, it, it, it's crazy that I see that, but um, okay. Um, combining orders. Okay, okay. Here's a big one that I, I heard a whole bunch of people don't know how to do it. And had a lot, and somebody even emailed me. In fact, I think I probably have one now that I didn't even respond to. Um, once someone buys your items, there is the easiest way in the world to combine them. There's no buttons really to click or anything else like that. Just ship one of the items. All just just print one label for one single item. Even if there's ten items going together, control. 
uh, uh, C, copy and paste the tracking number to the other items and boom, you're done. That's it. That's all there is to combining shipping. You can manually on a calculator figure out if you're going to refund them the difference or what. I always refund every dime extra when we combine shipping. I don't care if they ask me or not. I always do that. That's another reason why everybody comes back to me. Even if they do, unfortunately, buy them separately. I do keep the 30 cent processing fee though. So I don't refund that to the buyer when they buy two, three, four items from us. So just FYI, but I always refund everything else. That 30 cents I had to pay, so that's that's a, a part of the payment. I'm not keeping it for any other reason other than the fact that it's a fee that I have to pay because they bought two separate items. So again, that's the easiest way to combine anything that's been paid for. Just go in, mark one of them. I do bulk too, so I'll just remove the items. Say there's 10 items. I sold eight items to somebody just before the show. To, uh, $306 to somebody. One person bought eight different items. Um, all with offers. And all I do is take out or just send one item over into the bulk purchase or bulk labels. And then I just cut and paste eight times the, the tracking number and I'm done. You don't have to mark them as shipped. You don't have to do anything. The minute you add the tracking number onto a listing like that, it's done. It marks it as shipped. And you can also, here's another thing that most people haven't a clue on either. It, let's say you print a label today for an item. Mail wasn't going out yet. The buyer the buyer emails you later on, hey, I'd like to add another item into that purchase. The same thing, just cut and paste the tracking number and it'll it'll mark it as it's in the same package. That's all you gotta do. It's, it's, there's nothing to adding them that way at all. So anyway, there is no way though to combine shipping in a buyer's cart. You can't see it, you can't edit it, you can't do anything. Any Any multi-paragraphs you have to write to a buyer to try and do anything is just going to be a long drawn-up process that'll probably get the guy or, or girl mad and if you tell them to check out through the cart and you, you think it's gonna gonna give them the the offer best your best offer prices it's not they're gonna pay full price they're gonna email you all upset it's happened to me before i didn't know the guy was even doing it i sent some offers out he says i got some more in my cart i'll go ahead and, and take care of that next thing i know he's complaining because the, the cart forced them to pay for the full price of the item. The only way you can accept an offer is one by one. So anyway, you've got to go into that specific offer and accept it. And if you, you're forced to pay for it, you can't put it in your cart. You know, so, and one other thing, I was told that, hey, it's in their cart. I'll just go ahead and edit their price on the item to give them the break because we've been talking about it. If an item's in someone's cart, many times you can't edit anything on it, at least the price, the title, and I think the condition box. They're, they're shadowed out, so you can't touch those. That's just like if you send an offer to somebody and you want to adjust the price, you've got to wait till that offer's dead, or they ex well, if they accept it, you can't change it anyway, but you've got to wait till that offer's dead. You can't change certain aspects. You can't edit certain aspects of a listing if there's pending action on it. Just FYI. And even sometimes, let's say somebody sends you an offer and you want to do something with that listing and you want to decline it, that still may be hanging up on that listing and still will prevent you for hours after the fact from being able to edit the title and certain other aspects. I had somebody watching an item yesterday and one of them employees must have reused the title or something and he, he, he was very helpful and said, hey, you got the wrong title on something. I couldn't edit it because he was watching the item and we were in conversation. It, it blocked out any way that I could edit the title. So I had to wait till the next day, like eight hours later or something. It allowed me then to go ahead and edit the title. So those those are some things that people, people aren't aware of. Now let's talk about the phone app. If you want to do volume, I can't use the phone app for volume at all. Your, your phone app, eBay's phone app is not a full feature app. Now, that's very important to understand what a full-featured app means. A full-featured app means it has all the features of the normal site. eBay's uh, phone app or phone phone app does not have all the features. Now, they say you could get to the stores, but whenever I try to do it for my phone, it does not go to a store. So I don't know what they're talking about on that, but you, you can't do a lot of the features that I show from your phone. That's just the way eBay set it up didn't want to spend the extra time or effort to put it into the app. You can't just transfer your your website to an app. It doesn't work that way. You've got to build the app. It's a totally different form of coding, so it doesn't work that way. Unfortunately, I've, I've created a few phone apps in my day, so I understand how it works. 
the phone app again has like an API basically to the platform. Again, there's APIs for stuff. Just like some platforms right now um, have some issues with being able to sync with eBay because eBay's, you know, the API has changed. They've changed the category structures. So until other other platforms or other apps have the ability or the knowledge or have to set up the app to to change it, it's not going to work correctly. Now, one more thing on Inkfrog is now I've had probably a half a dozen people ask me on Inkfrog, when you sell similar from eBay and you're not doing anything from Inkfrog, if you do it from eBay, those listings will not link to the listings that they originally were stored in Inkfrog. Or in, in Inkfrog. So in those cases, what I do is I end and get rid of the stuff in my Inkfrog. I don't do templates in Inkfrog like a lot of people do. I just use it just for the basics, for syncing and, and cross-listing and stuff like that. I just deleted all of my stuff and re-imported them, and everything was correct after I did that on Inkfrog. Just, just FYI. Um, let's see. I know I've got probably a half a dozen more that are here. I know I've talked about always always answer emails and always answer them within a, a very short, brief time because that is, from what I see, possibly how eBay could judge whether you're worthy of your items showing or not. Um, I think I've got to all the highlights here. That's mostly it. I know I've probably missed some of the, the chat up on the top. Let me pop back up and see where we're at. Zach MC, how are you doing? I have them recording one of their associates. I'm not sure where that's at. Hey, Dom, I, I brought you up just a little, little bit ago there. How you doing, Dom? Primetime Treasure Hunter, very good friend of the channel here. Good videos, of course. I think probably most people know who Dom is, or at least I'd hope they did. Coming in Nov, we all love eBay. If we hated it, we would quit. We bothered because we love... I, I, I do love the eBay itself. Where else can I... Can I find the stuff? Where else Where else can I find the collectibles? I think I love eBay for buying certain collectibles and the wife and stuff that loves certain things than anything else. I can sell buttons on many. I can get more money for some buttons on other sites besides eBay any day of the week. There's, For those in Patreon, you know I've talked about a specific auction site, and I've shown you prices as the stuff goes for there. I've actually bought a button or two off eBay and, and sold it there for like four times what I bought it for on eBay. And what I bought it for on eBay was the highest price one of those those buttons ever went for. To we're talking about clothing buttons, uniform style uh, or not. But anyway, oh, where are we at? Uh, Beauty sounds. How are you doing, Jill N? Yeah, e younger buyers don't go to eBay. You should know that. My kids don't mess with eBay that much, honestly. And most people or most of their friends eBay, they'll go to Amazon or they'll go to uh, Poshmark if they're getting clothing. I mean, that's most of the teenagers and stuff that, you know, show up here around the house, that's where they'd go. eBay isn't even the, the eBay's for their, their parents is what I hear all the time. At, at colleges, you'll never hear it. See, that's another problem with eBay cutting off uh, advertising. What do you think you'd get if you pushed it all over and made yourself cool at, at colleges or schools? You know, you'd be you'd be you know big in if it turned into some fad or you stuff like that. I mean, advertising could have been the biggest thing they spent that even just one billion dollars in advertising. They could have crushed everybody else in advertising and brought everybody to eBay. They could have just been throwing out all this stuff instead of worrying about only trade cards. Only high-end watches, only high-end sneakers, only high-end uh, purses. Those are what they're centering on. And, and you're going to see them centering. You're going to see more of those types of items is what they're going to be promoting. All the money has been pulled from the way the CEO literally stated in that interview and been put into upper value, uh, upper funnel, he calls them, which is just a, a word for saying rich people stuff. You know, I don't spend, I'd never spend a thousand, five thousand dollars on a pair of shoes. Never, 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 never. I love my rock ports. It's the only shoes that never hurt my feet. They're like a hundred bucks. I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't know what other shoes cost. I only buy the ones that I, that I, I, I like. I don't look at the price if they fit, but I don't go to a high end store. I think we, we went to, um, shoe circus or something like that maybe last time. Um, hey, Tommy Z, how are you doing? Carla Murray, how are you doing? Well, thank you for, for that, Carla. If you haven't tried to sell similar, I would honestly possibly recommend you might look into that. I got a video on that that you might might uh, check into. I've had 
more than I care to count, tell me that that did the trick for their account. It was just like nothing ever happened, and they're right back up to where they were. I can tell you 100%, you know, hand of God, hand in the Bible, that my sales have not been this good this entire month until the 28th when I started doing sell similar. Now they're through the roof every single day. I'm just keeping up. Every day we're relisting. Um, so until all of our items are relisted up to October 12th. Because I don't trust, I, I really think they've they've intentionally shut off all these other aspects of the low value stuff. Again, because that's what he's telling us. Um, and they're only worried about the high value, high dollar stuff. Again, sneakers, one of the execs at eBay, in my opinion, has a conflict of interest because his son has some major sneaker store that he deals with with his kid. And again... Why is eBay doing sneakers then? So most people know if you if you want to buy sneakers, there's other sites out there that know their stuff. I know eBay authenticates and all this other stuff, but I'm just, I don't have much faith in a lot of the, the, the stuff eBay puts out there. If it's created by the execs, it's probably no good for the most part. Um, and I do honestly feel that the, the direct payment for offers is a money grab and nothing more. I know there's a lot of people saying, no, that's what what's going on. Oh, one more thing. Let's talk about this, too. eBay still does have an unpaid item case thing that you can open up. After four days, you can cancel it, which is the exact same basic principle that happened with the unpaid item case. If somebody doesn't pay, you, open, you opened up the unpaid item case, and then eBay would eventually cancel it. All they did was speed up the time. You don't have to wait anymore. After four days, you can cancel it. And from what eBay has personally told me on a phone conversation, that when they cancel it, that buyer is dinged just like they were before through the unpaid item case issues they had in the past. So it's basically the same thing. You never have to wait more than four days if you don't want to on a buyer never you can just you, you have to set it up though ebay just doesn't automatically do it you have to go in there's a button or something you have to click i would never do it so i didn't even look where it's at honestly but uh, I, we have a seven day standardized payment window and i again i let people stay way longer than that i also had somebody saying hey i can't pay till uh thursday can w is that okay i i always say yes as long as it's within, within that and i always make it a special note to email them uh, we've got some pre-made paragraphs and i'll email them a little paragraph give them a little information and then tell them we we don't mind you can wait seven days that guy always comes back. The guy that you let wait till payday will come back to you every time because most other sellers don't do that. That's why I get more business by waiting. I'm not I'm not impatient. I did that when I only had a handful of items because I knew the 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 benefit of doing that. So people say, "Well, you got 30,000 items in your store. Of course you can do that." I did that from day 1. I've never changed that policy. Just like I've, uh, we've tested the free shipping. I, I never will do that because I've tested it for for quite some time. I've always done these sorts of things. I don't care how many items I have up. The money is never yours. It is never yours until a certain length of time goes by. So it doesn't matter if the sales go through fine or anything. It's not yours because it can be pulled back from a chargeback or a return. What I would say is going to happen, and I've had a lot of people even point this out as well, is by forcing them to purchase it, what's going to happen? Your return rate's going to go up. And you're going to lose 10, 12%, maybe 14% of people will go to somebody else or might not buy your item because they see that paywall. Those are, those are uh, statistics that you can actually look into on business sites. Things like that. People have studied uh, paywalls and all other things. There, there's been millions of dollars spent on how to avoid losing a buyer after so many clicks. Look it up. So again, this all means something to me. Maybe everybody else doesn't know those certain aspects. I'm not trying to brag at all. I want to know how I can make my business better, and not just from the eBay standpoint, but from any standpoint. It's the only way you grow. I, I, I took college classes in business as well, too, which, again, anybody out there could probably get a free class through the Small Business Administration pretty much... If you're only taking one, there's a valid reason. And if not, if you can't get it for free, it's a tax deduction, 100%. The books, you can even write off some of the transportation, that it takes your gas and stuff like that. That's an expense. It's a business expense for you to drive out there. You can, you can track your mileage. If you're not tracking your mileage, you're losing money for sure. So anyway, again, these are all valid ways to improve it. Take that guy who says he can't pay to the third. 
what I always say, if you're worried about that, tell them, tell them that's fine. That's your whatever. But uh, if, if, if you don't pay on that day, I will have to open up an unpaid item case because I only have so much time to make a claim. That's what you have to say to them. So, you know, you don't have a lot to lose. I know people say, well, somebody else might have bought it. How many? It's not that simple because that item could have sat in your store for two months. Do you really know for sure somebody else is going to buy it? You can say, well, there's other watchers. There's people every day. Most sellers have items that have a lot of watchers and who haven't sold for months, maybe a year or two. So the amount of what the watchers means nothing. The only time I even look at views is when my sales jumped off a cliff on the 12th. The only time I look at watchers is when I want to know if I can send an offer to a watcher. That's it. I could care less about eBay's sell-through rate. I could care less about how many views or how many watchers I get if my sales are coming in. Those, th that means nothing. Views, views don't mean you're going to get a sale out of something. Watchers don't sale out of something ever, 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 ever. I've had items with 50 watchers and never sold the item. I had to draw out. Finally, I think the last one that had a ton of views, I took it and put it in somewhere else on another site, and it sold fairly quickly. You, you just have to have the right person on at the right time for something to sell. That, that's, that's the end of the story for most items. One more thing, and I have to bring this up, and it's not, this is going into eBay hiding your items. 100%, 100% they are doing that. They state they can hide your items in the user agreement. And for the amount of people that contact me, again, it's, 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 one, it's into the thousands in just a few videos. So that many people have said that this helped their store. You can find hundreds of them on just one video alone yourself. Um, how could that be unless eBay was doing that? I've never been so sure because, again, they're saying they could do stuff like that. They state it in the user agreement that they could do stuff like that. The problem with that is that the items had people wanting to buy them. Talk to some of your buyers and you find that to be the case as well. Email a couple buyers and, and that you, of stuff that just you sell similar and ask if they look for that stuff all the time. You'll be surprised that a lot of them will tell you, yeah, I've been looking for this forever here on eBay and it's been hidden from them. So people say, well, eBay wants all these sales. They may want the sales, but they don't understand how their own site works. If they did, they wouldn't hide these sort of items based on that. They're only judging your items on a NOS new stock situation because, again, the people running it are Walmart people. So they're judging it on how Walmart, how Amazon runs stuff, how they look at their numbers. You can't do that with collectibles, vintage, and antiques. It does not work that way. Any person who's been into an antique mall, what do you see in an antique mall? You see a ton of different stuff all over the place. Do you think those people pull those stuff out if it hasn't sold in a couple of months? Maybe a vendor might not afford to be able to put his stuff in the store because they got the right or wrong type of merchandise in there. But that stuff sits in an antique mall. We go to an antique mall whenever we're down in the Hocking Hills area, down towards Columbus, Ohio. I've seen the same stuff down there for six and seven years in the exact same place. And in fact, it's a plus for me because when I go down there, I can say, hey, we bought something last time. We bought a big can with my wife's family's last name on it. It was like an oil can or something, a real giant size one. I got it for almost nothing because I said, hey, you've had this here for six years. And I knew it was because I've seen it every year we go there. So uh, that's, that's where the whole idea of just keeping stuff running on your store comes from. If you're not into antiques, this may be strange or odd to you overall. Why would you keep stuff running? I hear that all the time. You've had it up for four years. Sounds like you don't know what you're doing. I do know what I'm doing, and that's why I've got it up for so long. It, I have nothing into it. By the time you get your item listed, all the effort, all the labor is done. It's done. It's done. You have nothing more to do with the items that are sitting in your store. If it's not costing you any more money, why in God's green earth would you ever take that down? You've always got a potential for it to be sold if eBay was, isn't shadowing it. And we all know now how we can avoid eBay shadowing it. Now, Dom, I, I'm going to say something Dom and I talked about the other day, and I don't think he'll be upset about this, but he said next time, watch the next update, remove the option to sell similar. I would not be surprised about that. And I, I tell you why, again, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to bash on people I make money from, but when they're screwing me over and I lose thousands of dollars between the 12th and the 28th, I have an issue with that. 
and they have no concern. You're not going to get, nobody's going to get any compensation for their sales loss. That's on you. It's in the user agreement. They don't have to show your stuff. So they're free and clear. You can't take them to court. You can't class action suit them or anything. It doesn't work that way. You can't do that. Don't even think about it. It's, it's a waste of your time. Last, I don't know how many dozens of cases against eBay were just thrown out of court. So it, it just doesn't work that way. You, you can't recoup that. It's just bad business. It's just bad business. That's all I can say. They they just they're the the wacky waving arm guy waving in the wind like that. That's what they're doing. You've got somebody who has no business running a play, running a, a site like that. He's no business being in a position like that. Watch his watch the interview on third quarter numbers if you want to see who's who's making all this these changes. I, I, they're not worried about the people selling low-valued items. They're not worrying about the sellers selling low-valued items because you wouldn't see them saying, well, it's on them now to deal with the coupons. Now, we did, we did I think, out of all, we've sent out 1,000, 1,500 coupons. When they first came out, we did okay with them. I haven't had a single person uh, redeem a coupon in five months, so I stopped doing it. So if eBay is going to rely on you, me, Dom, any of these other folks out there to bring people into your store, the coupons are not going to do it. The only thing that's going to keep people coming back is to let them know and to talk to them. For crying out loud, the people who don't do combined shipping, who won't give refunds when they do combined shipping, you're just losing your customer. No wonder you only have them in your store once. I'm sorry, but that's true. So, and again, if, if you're having tons of of people on paying or not paying for stuff or returning it sell something else look and don't just jump out of one category and don't think that hey i'm never going to be able to sell something else i thought that but nowadays i don't i i've, I've just spent my time start slowly moving away from it even if you drop five percent of your clothing to get five percent of something else or two percent another percent in a couple more weeks it's going to eventually alleviate some of your headaches some of those aggravations from doing that i sold clothing for crying out loud i did books we did i was a book scanner i had the little scanner that clipped on the bottom of my phone that kept the database of books so i could go into places that turned off the wi-fi and the, your ability to search i figured out how to do it i could put it in my sleeve even and it would beep into my ear into a a um uh, uh, my Wi-Fi or what is it, Blu-ray or what is it? I can't think what it's, Bluetooth uh, earphone for that. So I could instantly tell, no one else could tell what I was doing. All I got to do is sit here. You can't even see it in your sleeve. There's many ways to do a lot of things. But again, that, that market for me went when, when Amazon uh, increased the, the storage fees for books and clothing. I was just sick of the, the returns. Again, a lot of people are sick of the returns. A lot of people are sick. And most of the people who say that they're getting unpaid items are home goods and clothing mostly. I don't sell that because I don't want to have to mess with that. Again, it wasn't overnight. I didn't just turn a switch and say I'm not selling those items. I looked into something else. I never knew all this other stuff. I just spent my time researching it. When I figured one out, I went on to another one. You know, nobody, you, you can't just turn and instantly sell something else. Never claimed you could, you know. My way is not the only way. You could, there's, I know people who sell just kitchen supplies. I know people who sell fake flowers. I know people that sell plushes. I know people that just sell action figures. I know people that create their own action figures and that's all they sell. I know people that customize action figures and that's all they sell. I know people that do Warhammer figures. I even paint Warhammer figures and sell some of those. There's a lot of things you can do. You can even cast your own figures. You can create your own this. You can do costuming on Etsy. The, the the best thing is to do something that you actually like. If it's not fun, you're not going to want to do this that long. You're going to get burned out. I don't get burned out. I never get burned out because I am I'm addicted to this. I really am. It's it's a compulsive disorder almost. Not a hoarder because everything is for sale. It's not like I keep everything. We do have some collectibles, but you know this is in my blood. I love what I do. I I am more passionate about this than any other business or venture I've ever done in my life. Ever, ever, ever. This is like my calling and I wished I would have found it sooner. So I don't take anything lightly. I don't, I, I treat it all 100% dead serious. You know, I'm, you don't see me jolly. I'm, we have fun. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I like jokes and all that kind of stuff, but you don't see it on here because it's business. This is business. Um, I, I feel out of place 
doing what I normally do at home, you know, on here, because again, I'm, this is a business thing for me. I like talking about the business that I'm in and that I am more passionate than, than any type of thing other than my family in my entire life. This, there's nothing else that I would ever want to do in my life. Uh, well, I could probably work for a movie if there'd be a director or something, direct a movie or something, but that's, you know, or art. I love miniatures. I'd love to be a movie miniature builder or something, but you know, I like this. I'm, I like to be my own boss. What one more thing here too, and I know I, I usually take some a bunch of people saying uh, criticize me for saying this, but I I swear to everybody out there, it's not about the money. I could make a heck of a lot more money by doing the promotions and and stuff here on YouTube. I don't I don't even post stuff on Instagram. I almost never post anything other than a link on Facebook and stuff because I, I'm not I'm not a promoter. I'm not not into that. Uh, there's there's lots of ways to make money though and, and and I'm not interested in the money as as like most other people would be. I'm not greedy. I don't really care. I've learned to 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 live without a lot of stuff in my time. We were on the the bottom rung and barely could afford to eat good food. The kids ate good and we ate whatever was left. So, you know, you know, I've been evicted before because we couldn't pay our rent before. You know, so I I I've been to the bottom. I, I I'm not I don't care anymore. I, I, I don't miss not watching TV. I don't miss not having a Mercedes or a, a BMW or a Lotus or whatever you, you want. There's nothing wrong with wanting that. I, that's just not me, though. Everybody to each his own. Who cares what somebody else wants? I don't care. But that, I'm not into that. I'm into this for the freedom that this supplies me. Nothing more. That's the main reason. Sure, I'd love to do okay so I can go out and do stuff with the family. We're doing fine, so I'm not, not concerned about that. But that's not the reason I really do this. I missed, I work, for, I know I'm rambling, I, I'm, this, I'm, you're stuck with me rambling. I worked for somebody for, for 20 plus years of my life, and I don't have much to show for it. I missed my, my kids' first steps. I missed their first words. I, I could go on and on about things I missed in, in my wife's life. I, she was in the hospital, and I couldn't even leave where I was at because no one else w with authority I could leave a key to because of alcohol in the building. I was the only one with a liquor license, so I had to wait till. So I mean, I, I, I've missed so much of my 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 family time. I worked eighty hours a week during Katrina for a year plus. I I I work pretty much every day of the week when I work for somebody else. I do that now, but it's fun now. I don't. I can stop, go, do whatever I want anytime I want. And and again, it's the freedom. It's the freedom. There's nothing more important in my life than being able to do what I want to do when I want to do it and not have to have somebody looking over my shoulders or tell me I'm doing something wrong. If I mess up something, it's all on me. And I take that I take that as that's the case. It's my fault. I messed it up. So I'm going to fix it. You know, it's all it's all my responsibility to do the right thing and to follow through with what I say I'm going to do. There's nobody who sets a time clock for me and I'm that's what I want. I, I, I don't, I'd probably have to cut off a couple of toes or something if I was ever forced to go back to a restaurant. I don't think I could ever do it. And I, I did extremely well. I, I know restaurants inside and out. I could cook every single piece on the menu in every restaurant I ever worked. I could do every position. That's what you train in a restaurant. You train for three months and you learn how to do everything. And I, I was fully into it because I, I needed to make the money. I needed to pay for newborn child and my wife and you know we, we lost the child between the two we have and so I've seen a lot I've done a lot I've lived in six states I've been across from one side from the east coast to the west coast from the north to the south all for for working for somebody else I would have rather just stayed home and been with the wife and, and it without this position without doing this I'm missing the freedom I know people say, well, you rely on eBay. eBay is less than 40% of my, my revenue from, from this reselling sources. So, you know, uh, eBay isn't, isn't my main concern anymore like it used to be. It's not my fault. It's just the fact that I get more, more revenue putting stuff on other platforms many times than eBay. I, again, I, I, that's not what I want to do. It would be so much easier just to have one site, not have to work, worry about syncs or eBay killing APIs. Just put it all on eBay and I'd be done. But, but that's not possible anymore because of how eBay is run. You know, I, I don't know how else to, to express that to people, that this is about freedom and not necessarily the money. If you want to be a millionaire, your chances even as a reseller are slim. Sure, there's people that have become millionaires, and I, I've talked to one or two who do reselling. They do it in massive bulk, and they do it on Amazon, but they do do it. 
So yeah, it's possible, but those are the one in a uh, 10,000 type of thing. I don't care if I'm a millionaire. I really don't. I don't like the atmosphere and the, the, the stuck upness and looking down on you like you're a piece of crap, pardon me, but, but I, I worked at Disney. I saw a lot of famous people. There's been some that were just wonderful people that, that talked to you like you were a normal person. John Schneider is one of those. We actually talked to John Schneider from, from Dukes of Hazard. He's a singer, too, if you didn't know that. I've sold his records. Very, very nice. Didn't know who he was until he introduced himself. Robin Williams. I talked to Robin Williams. He came to our restaurant, ate in our restaurant. It was him, Lemmy, and... Shoot, I can't think. Maybe it was Bobcat that time, but he... he bust his own table and brought the dishes into the dish room. I was a dishwasher at Disney back in the day, a place called Backlot Express when I first started there. My first job at Disney was was a dishwasher. I worked up from there, but and he came in. It was the first famous person I ever saw there, and he shook my hand, he talked to us, he made jokes to us. It was he was just a normal person in that dish room. He didn't mind. He got wet. He got dirt on his shoes. He didn't care. He was doing the whole Robin Williams thing for like two minutes in that kitchen. He talked to the people who cooked the food. It was a wonderful experience. And it uh, only because he was a normal person. He didn't look down on us. I've seen, I've seen all the stories from Kevin Smith working with uh, Bruce Willis and how insulting he is to his, his fans. And, and again, I'm not trying to say I'm anything famous. Don't, I'm, I know somebody will probably say that, but I'm just talking about in general how, how people are. And that's not me. If you're wanting freedom, this is for you. If you just want to be rich, probably not for you. If you don't want to work many hours, it's probably not for you. You know, that's the facts of life. And, and you know, you, I, I, I can't say I've had a middle life crisis, but I know where I stand and I know what I want out of my life. And it's the freedom. I don't want to have to deal with... Some idiot boss who just graduated school, who's never been in a real world situation in a food, a restaurant or a retail establishment. So anyway, I know I, I ramble, I ramble again. That's I'm stuck with that. You're stuck with me if you want to listen to me. Let me try to end, pop down. I'm going to have to, I'm going to try. People complain when I don't, when I don't um, go down to the bottom of the feed, but I try to answer everybody's question. Um, I would never launch a platform, Tiffany. Again, then it'd have to be, I'd have to be responsible for all kinds of stuff. I have been talking to a couple platforms, to be honest with you, and I'm not going to, I, I'm, I've got a, a sign thing. I can't discuss anything on, on one of the sites we've been talking to. So that's all I'm going to tell you, but don't give up hope. I, I truly feel that another site will, will, see what's going on if ebay's numbers are bad in fourth quarter i could seriously within the year see someone else online or an existing business online offering options for you let's i'll just leave it at that take it however you want but i'll just leave it at that i've talked to other sites though they've contacted me i didn't reach out to them i, I don't do that i'm not trying to get any deals going with somebody but if somebody reaches out and i talk to them free of clear i have no financial doings with either one of them uh, i just we were just talking i was giving them my personal opinions on things and my advice on what would would it take for them to accomplish certain tasks with acquiring certain types of business that's all it, again i'm free and clear and able to do that that's my choice so uh, let me see i know i'm, I'm sure let me try to get some questions i know i'm terrible on that Uh, again, prime time is in the house. RVPLC followed your advice and my sales picked back up. I ended around 2,000 listings, sold similar, and I'm back to normal. That's the majority of people. Not everybody. If you've only got a few hundred items and they've only been up for a couple months, that's probably not going to work for you. Um, I think eBay treats accounts differently would be my personal opinion based on the length you've been on the platform. I know uh, some stores, if it hasn't sold in a certain length of time, eBay takes the stuff down, I've had people tell me. I haven't looked into that, and I probably should, and maybe I should write that down, um, because they say it's not selling after so many cycles. eBay doesn't do that to our account. So I, I really think there's levels to it. Once you have a certain amount of items, they have to expect that the items need to sit longer, uh, would be my guess on it. I mean, I would assume that. I would figure that into the equation no matter what I did. Again, who knows what eBay is going to do. 
I know I very rarely remember to say it. The show has been going on for an hour and 20 minutes. If you do enjoy the conversation, please slam that thumbs up button. I got 312 people in the house and 138 likes right now. Um, busy girl. Yeah, eBay should be getting better and not worse. I I, I appreciate the, the kind words, um, busy girl. That's my opinion. That that's what I personally think. If if we don't speak up and everybody just goes along with whatever eBay does, it, nothing's going to happen. The, the, at some point, when the financials look bad, and again, the only reason eBay's even doing half good right now is because of the pandemic. That is luck. That is luck, and nothing more than luck. Why eBay is doing as good as they are now, even though they're ten percent down in in volume of merchandise sold on the platform, just in a three month time frame, mind you. Well, everybody needs to seriously pay attention in, in the 1st of February when they release fourth quarter numbers. You really need to pay attention to that. If it goes down, that's a sign to worry, in my opinion. I, I always say eBay's never going to go under in the past. eBay's never going to be bought out. But at this point, if financials look even worse and the pandemic, they, they're unable to keep that momentum, which I don't think they're going to at all because of these moves they're making and specializing in, in purses when you can buy them somewhere else, real, real, and all these other sites out there. I, I don't see it. I don't see it. I, I just don't see it. The, the safest site to buy on, to buy on. And again, I look at everything from the buyer's point of view these days. I don't even care about my point of view usually. But most of the stuff I complain about is stuff that hurts the buyers as much, if not more, than us. Amazon's the safest place to buy on from, as a buyer's point of view. I have never been screwed by anybody um, on Amazon because of their, what, the A to Z claim thing or whatever it is. They've always made every single one right. Every one. Every single one. Um, now that reminds me, let, let, let's side note for just one second here. I want to give you a true experience that happened and something you should never, ever, 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 ever do. I bought a, a piece of plastic, a sheet of plastic for my son. He's working on a little miniature of something off of eBay. It, it, it was dropped off at the post office and it never left that post office. I contacted the buyer several times after the item was sitting for 12 plus days. On the 16th day, I personally opened up a search on that item and it, it was searched out. Now, I saw that that item was, I think, 19 days from the day that the person dropped it off at the post office before it even left that post office. 19 days, true. This is a true story. And the buyer didn't look at my responses. He didn't do anything. He just ignored every one of my my uh, emails and everything. Didn't All he had to do was open up the case if he would have listened to me. I shouldn't have to do that. That's something you as the seller should do. That's customer service. Everybody should go out of their way to help the buyer to make sure the item gets there. I've even called post offices directly myself, tracked down the number to make sure if the item was stuck at the post office, if they could do something with it. I'm, you know, I'm, that's, that's the type of thing you should do. Um, but... The day after it showed it was moving, I'm fine. I was going to just let the case sit. I figured at this point it's finally moving. I'll get it in, say, a week or so. That's fine. It wasn't an emergency. Mind you, it would have been 26, 27 days from the day it was dropped off at the post office. I could have lived with that. I'm not an impatient person, honestly. The buyer upped the case, upped it to an actual case instead of just my my request for, for where's the item at. He upped it to a case. And... With eBay, if you up it to a case and it hasn't shown movement in more than 10 days, the item's considered lost. So eBay sided with us, gave us our money. I didn't ask them to do that. I was 100% willing to wait because at that point I knew for sure the minute I, I opened up the case on the post office's site, the very next day it was moving. Don't tell me it wasn't related because every time I open up, and again, I use the third option down on lost packages. There's three options on the post office for lost packages. Don't ever mess with the first or the second one as long as it's been over a certain length of time because all it does is go to the post office of your designation and our post office closes it like within two minutes of me opening case. If you do it on the third one, it goes to a regional number. It's totally different. And those are the only ones I ever do these days. I don't care what the post office page says. If I do the third, the lowest option on that page, it always it always gets the item moving. So I got a free item and I got my money back and the item because that buyer thought he was going to win the case. All he wrote in the the why he, he decided up it because it's not my fault. I mailed it. Tracking numbers there. 
buyer should understand. And that's what he wrote on there into, into his case. If he wouldn't have upped it to a case, he would have just been able to keep his money and nothing would have happened. The minute it showed as, as it arrived at my house, it would have closed the case. So this guy thought he was going to get me as the buyer. I was the buyer of this item. So as you being the seller, if you see tracking on it, don't don't up it to a case thinking you're going to win. The only way you're going to win a case like that is if tracking shows it was picked up. All I did was open a item not received because it. I first emailed the guy twice asking him to look into it. When he didn't look into it and it hit day 16 or whatever it was, I opened up the item not received because the buyer, the seller wasn't even conversing with me. He could care less. And then I looked at his feedback, you know, I think I looked at his feedback before and it wasn't terrible, but there were several other people saying he never responded, never cared, didn't respond weeks and stuff. So anyway, don't make those stupid mistakes. I mean, that's, that, that's the, the, the dumbest mistake. Again, he, it cost him the item. I, I'm not going to go and pay him the item. I didn't ask him to, to up the case and blame it on me. He wanted the case closed in his behalf. It was very obvious, you know, I was fine to wait and you should be, I mean, People are too impatient these days with things. But anyway, I know I'm ranting again. We're going to cut it off in just a little bit here. Um, Jill N., good evening. Um, where are we at? Epic Treasures. When eBay sales start to really tank and their shareholders uh, catch wind of it, their board of directors will demand the CEO resign. Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm assuming, but who knows? You know, the, the last one was there, what, two years or three years or something? This guy doesn't know what he's doing, man. The Nook thing, oh, that, that gets me to no end. The fact that he killed the Nook, you know. But but anyway, he doesn't know what he's doing. They're they're only looking at top funnel expensive crap, and most stores, most of most anybody who's selling secondhand, your bread and butter are are the low valued items, the ones that he 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 downgrades and looks down on. Low valued buyers. I can just see him sitting there looking down in the board meetings, talking about we don't want these idiots buying twenty, thirty, forty dollar items. You know they have no respect for us. He just lines his pocketbook again. I, I wouldn't say this is just my opinion. There's some factual evidence from him stating these that he doesn't want low buyer low value buyers and that's why he's claiming that they're losing business because they're not going to worry about the low valued buyers what does amazon do they don't worry about high end low end they want everybody everybody that's why anybody can sell what they want on there as long as you're ungated in those categories so um yeah i wish they just fire the guy but you know they shouldn't have hired him. The only reason they hired this guy, in my opinion, is he was the only one who would take it knowing that federal charges were pending. No one knew federal charges in the public specter or, or uh, uh, sphere, but he knew it. They had to have addressed it to him. So he was the only one who took the job going, well, there's federal charges pending and eBay's going to be all over the news badly. I, I wouldn't take the job just because of that. I wouldn't want my name tied to a company that did the kind of things they did to the Steiners at e-commerce bites. I would, I would be, that would bother me. I couldn't do that. Morally wise, I couldn't. Uh, let's see here. Morals and valuables. Well, thank you very kindly. Uh, thank you very much. Advice on self summary works. My sales increased 300% in less than 24 hours. Just wanted to stop and drop them as well. Thank you very kindly. That's the majority of people are telling me the same thing. And I know people have done this in the past. We tested 2,000 items, 1,000 at a time, on two different occasions doing that. And our categories at that time weren't buried. So it, it appears every time they do this update, it happened with clothing, it happened with some other items. It happened with records. It happens with books, DVDs, and things like that. Records, it was a big one too. But that's what happens. When they, they've changed the categories, they must have obviously changed the search results. So now the only way we have been gotten or got traction on those old listings, and again, we're up probably more than 300% right now every day of the week um, since the 28th, since I started this. You can look at my, my graph. It's just, it's, it's up to the 12th and then the 12th and then the 12th to the 28th. It's like not straight, but it's, it's really dead. And then... Start the 28th, it's it's like max. It's the highest ones for the entire month. Every day past the 28th, the day I started doing Sell Similar. So, you know, they're, they're hiding stuff that people want. End of story, which is stupid. Amazon doesn't steer away anybody. They want every dime they can get, and that's what most businesses should do, legally and morally just-wise. Not Amazon, but you know. 
Uh, Nicole Hoffman, I have a small time, so I appreciate all done. Well, thank you very kindly. Let me slide down here. Yeah, Zach, you know, I'm, I'm, I had to put that out there because I knew it was coming in. And sure enough, every time I say certain things about eBay, I get, I get, and again, I really think some of those folks stating it, especially the ones who make very obvious statements that I've read enough corporate documents. I read enough PR statements. I used to have to create those when I worked for Einstein Brothers. I used to, I, I'm in TV commercials. For those who didn't know, I did TV commercials in, in Mississippi when I was working at a, a place for a, a company there. I had to do a lot of that stuff. I did PR events. Uh, I, I, you know, conversed with people at other organizations, high ups and, and set stuff up. The, 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 some of the comments that are left are obviously, in my opinion, from eBay employees. That, that, you know, are trying to steer the conversation away from what's being said. eBay's trying to flood us out, too, those on YouTube. If you haven't noticed, they're trying to get all their own videos. They just sent me a thing where I can sign up for them to send me business information on my cell phone. I never sign up for any notices from eBay on any of that crap. Never, ever, 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 ever. Because all usually what happens is the minute you accept that, you're going to get a whole bunch of offers on charge cards through eBay. I get those all the time too. I, I don't do I don't pay any attention to those. I don't do any eBay meetings or any of that again because it's all corporate speak. It all it's all what the CEO wants to go. It's all PR statements. Anything they do, no big company just comes out and just randomly says stuff. It's all PR. Everything is run through a PR when you're that kind of company. Everything, every 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 everything. So the only one who may not would be the CEO. Uh. Let me try and pop down here. The monster loon. I know everybody says the customer is always right. I don't take it to that extent. I don't think the customer is always right. But the customer is the most important aspect in a transaction, though. If they're wrong, they're wrong, and I call them wrong. I, I won't give them a refund, or I won't do this. I'll, I'll you know do whatever I can to, to do the right thing if I've made the mistake. But if they're scamming me or, or trying to say something that's not true, I, I don't deal with it. I've taken a negative feedback in the past because I wouldn't do what the guy wanted. I was, I was in the right. I wasn't going to fold and give him the benefit of it. I could care less about the feedback at that point, you know. Um, yeah, Zach, MC, they don't say that anymore. Let me pop on down. Thank you, Crystal Walters. Again, that's yours to do what you want. No Chinese junk a lot. It's not just Chinese junk, but my wife orders. We order clothing online. I, I don't go into stores much anymore. I, I can't read the labels half the time, and I feel out of place in public. If My vision's only good with lenses or whatever I've got on to about 10 feet in front of my face. Um, other than that, it's hard to read stuff. I can still drive right now, but um, I, I don't, I don't just, I, we just buy online a lot. And probably, it didn't used to be this way on eBay, but on Amazon, you've got to be way careful and, and really investigate everything you buy because probably 65% of the clothing you get is not going to be correct size or things like that on Amazon. And like on eBay now, eBay's just turned into that. Same with like ThreadUp. My wife can't stand the ThreadUp. ThreadUp has, they've turned into a bigger and bigger monster, if you haven't realized. Um, again, our opinion based on ThreadUp issues, we've bought two, my, well, my wife bought, she bought a, two lots of clothing, two different groupings of clothing off there. Both of them we've had issues with. And both of the times we had to open up a case with eBay, even after they got the clothing back for days. We even gave them a couple extra days to give them benefit of the doubt. And eBay ended up having to give us our money back, not thread up. So we don't deal with thread up at all anymore. Again, that comes down to customer service. I don't deal with people who don't do the right thing or screw us over. And that's what happens when buyer or sellers out there don't give good customer service. They're not going to come back. That's, again, why you got one-offs. If the person only comes to your store once, you're not reaching out to them. You're not talking to them or your, your feedback or your policies are terrible in their mind. You may not think so, but you've got to step out of being a seller at least once in your life and look at it from the side of a buyer. I know most people do buy, but... Not every buyer is you. You're a seller. You need to think of it as someone who never have sold on eBay who's just a buyer. 
Just like trying to explain to them how you can figure out how to get it out of their cart where they can still get the offers. Once you start to go into paragraphs, that's too much work. I'll just go somewhere else. You're going to hear that. You know, that, that that's again, that's just factual. You're going to hear that. You know, people say eBay's worried about the money. That's why they're doing this. If they're worried about the money, they wouldn't be blowing off the low valued items and losing 10% of the volume sold on the platform in just three months. And they should be 10% up, so they actually lost 20% of what they should have had compared to every other reselling platform out there. How do you, how, you can compare platforms, whether you're talking about volume or not. If every other platform out there but eBay is up 10% and eBay is down 10%, which one is doing something wrong? Even if, let's say, Etsy was, was doing something wrong, if Etsy was 10% down, that'd be a different story. We're not talking about the actual volume. We're talking about whether they're up or down. If somebody's losing 3.3% of their business every single month, you're going in the wrong direction, buddy. That's all I can tell you. And if eBay loses again, fourth quarter numbers are going to be important. That's going to I'm I'm waiting for that because that's going to judge what I do in next year, seriously. Because when eBay hits 25% of my business, things are going to change, I promise you. And I'm going to have a we're, I'm actually going to talk about that on Sunday on a live show on Patreon. We're going to go into some 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 predictions, some 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 ways to keep this flowing. Anyway, let, let's go back to some questions here, if there are any. Yeah, Zbay, good luck with that. Beauty with Sound, the CEO is going for the 1%, but the wealthy folks uh, I know don't buy things on eBay. That's true, too. That is another true fact. They buy from high-end places. They buy buy from high-end sites, or they'll just buy it. They won't even buy a used one, a lot of people. They don't want a used purse, the truly top 1%. The only way to be successful is to be inclusive to every single buyer at every single level in your store. I don't. Again, that's why I treat a two-dollar item I sell just like a a thousand-dollar item I sell because every sale is important to the person buying it. I don't care if it's five bucks, ten bucks, ten thousand bucks. It is important to the person that buying it. They wouldn't buy it if it wasn't meaning something to them. End of story. If you're not going to treat your customers customers right and, and give them customers and go out of your way to help them, you're not going to do anything but one-offs. You know, every day of the week, I have multiple sales to the same person. Three just today. Just today. We're, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Just one of those. Again, you can see that in Patreon. I've got I've got it posted. You got one whole entire purchase from just one person, and all of those images are all different items. Um... Yeah, I don't. I I haven't paid for promoted listings in a year and a half. For those who I've had that question quite often, I have not paid for promoted listings on eBay in over a year and a half. To be honest with you, eBay eBay is misleading you, in my opinion. If you look at your listings page, if you're in your hub and you go to your listings tab, look at right on top of all your listings. The very first thing you see up there is sell your item faster. The first thing on there is promoted listings. The first thing. Do you know what probably works better is sell similar. Sell similar will probably sell your items faster than promoted because eBay can put your promotion on page 10, page 20. There's no guarantee on where it's going to go. And even if you pay to promote it, they don't have to show it as a promotion. And even if they do show it as a promotion, they don't have to show the organic. If the ad blocker removes it, they're not going to see it. So again, that is a issue, and that is why I will never do promoted listings. That's I actually talked to eBay when I got attacked for the uh, the article on e-commerce bytes over the promoted listings, and then they pretty much had no clue on what they were talking about. None of the people they brought into there understood at all how it worked, nor did they even understand why I would want to worry about having my items show up in Google. I'm sorry. That's, those are the head people of uh, the the girl in charge of promoted listings was in that video conference with me, as well as a couple other people. I think one of one of them was head of seller services. I think I'm not going to mention his name because I'm done with him. He totally blew me off when I wanted a serious answer for a lot of people over the issue of people stealing, and creating their own listings from your items without even owning anything. They would never answer that question. I'm sure legal shut them down and told them not to answer me. Guaranteed, that's what it was. They didn't want to answer that question because it could mean some bad implications later on down the road. It could have meant something for copyright issues as well, but anyway. 
uh, going for the one percent. I've got a slightly used. Yeah, okay. I won't, I won't won't say that. I know what you're talking about there, though. They're all rich billionaires trying to see who can go to space first. Not me. I could care less. If I was younger and was you know NASA or something, I'd volunteer. And I was single, I'd go to the I'd go to Mars. Really would. Even if it meant I would die there, just to have that experience. I mean, you only live once. Thank you, Jeff uh, Bernard. Thank you very kindly. Hey, Amazon seller nine and how are you doing? Uh, thank you very kindly, Yaz A. Uh, hey, Tiffany Thomas. I think I did call you R and C Q. Uh, let me slide down. Tracy's Oracle. How are you doing? Tracy's Oracle. I talked to my buyers and they love that. I could almost guarantee you she has repeat business just because of that. Man, that's the that's the biggest thing I ever learned working in retail for other people. The customer matters. Um, another thing, like people say in retail, theft and stuff like that. If you're out there on the floor helping the customer, they can't steal. If you're interested in, and I'm not, I'm not talking to stereotype. I'm just like. People should talk to every customer who walks in there to make sure they don't need some help or they don't want to, if they need something. If I walk into Best Buy, there's always somebody asking, hey, can I help you? That's good. That's why I go back to Best Buy. That's why I don't go to Office Depot or Office Max anymore for anything because no one's there to help you ever. I go to Best Buy because there's always somebody there and there's always somebody who knows where everything's at in the store. You know, that's, that's again, we're back to customer service 101. There's probably a class at one of your local colleges or universities. Community college or not, it doesn't matter where you take the class at. I would honestly recommend anybody who wants to know how to more successfully navigate the business world and advance your business to where you need like LLC and S Corp, take a class. You're talking, it's 14, 15 weeks at max, two days a week. Maybe you could get a class that maybe met once a week. You're talking 14 or 15 days you, out of an, out of four months you'd have to go somewhere, but you'd learn it if you paid attention. You know, And I seriously, seriously think a lot of people need that. They need that little boost. It'll, it'll pump you up majorly. You'll be, you'll be psyched about doing reselling or you know business in general. I promise you if, if you're into that sort of thing. And again, you can write it off in your taxes. It's a business expense, 100%. So anyway, people forget about that stuff. Uh, Winter Crow, always talk to my buyers. Messages, email, chat, and yes, so many are return buyers. Been sending handwritten thank you notes since 98. I don't do any notes. We did used to do that a while ago, but I didn't see a huge return. I felt that the direct contact through the the message system if you do it that way is is more personal i think in my opinion it'd be better to talk to a person but the next best thing is actually typing something very special i know it's a nice nice gesture so i'm not criticizing that at all on etsy that is huge and that does work on etsy too um, but for me personally I, i'd just rather do the the um emails if i want to get more business going you'll be surprised when when you talk to a few that you can get some more sales out of that that's that's the best way to get return repeat business you know the, the folks who don't do combined shipping no returns and all that kind of stuff no one's coming back to you you might get a one-off because you're the only one who had this up for six or seven months and they just needed it or wanted it and, and that's truthful or if you've got like terrible feedback and people keep telling me oh feedback doesn't matter they'll just buy it from whoever's cheapest too many people the vast majority of people have probably had a bad purchase where the item didn't show up or it was fake or something like that most people who who are using their brain are going to look at that before they make a purchase uh, and if the kids want something you know for a toy or a video game or something we always look and they know enough now these days to look for the the vendor with the best price first and then from there you go and look at who's got the best feedback return policies and all that kind of stuff it matters you know, people don't want to get something sent to the house and it not be what they want because then you got to wait even longer to get the right item. you got to deal with a return or whatever the case may be. Uh, let's see here. Let me slide down. Uh, 
uh, Darius uh, Dandries. I get to cancel about two of 30 items sold because of unpaid items. That is fine, really, but still a little annoying. I'm sure it's annoying. As I said, I did clothing. We had a lot of those issues. Never any higher rating like I see here with a lot of folks these days. I was really shocked that that many people are having that kind of issues. I never hear anybody bring that up to me personally. Um, and I don't really have time to watch other videos. I'm always reselling or, or dealing with, with reselling aspects. So I don't watch many videos. And vision-wise, I got so much time I can be in front of a screen these days. So I can either spend it watching something or doing something. And doing something makes me money, like, you know, listing stuff. So I, I do the obvious thing, which is to make money. I don't miss shows. I don't miss not eating sugar anymore. I don't miss not eating dairy anymore, I have to say. I thought it was going to be the hardest thing in the world to give up sugar, but I don't feel, I feel so much better, I have to say. Somebody else brought that up the other day. I said, how the heck can you give up sugar? I don't drink soda. I, I've got unsweetened iced tea in my glass right now. I don't drink any, I don't, nothing with sugar really. Um, uh, Chad Griffiths, any bit? Check out, you can get a, a uh, breakdown on classes, a catalog of the college or uh, university, and then look at the business section. Business 101 is, is probably the best. It's a basic class on business. It goes over all the aspects. They show you how to do financials and things along that line. And you can ask to see, the well, most sites, most colleges will have the syllabus online. The syllabus will show you what the projected outcomes of the class are. You'll see, usually there'll be a class schedule listed on there. Before you sign up for the class, you already know the days of the week they are. There's usually several different options. Um, I do have a master's degree, so I spend a lot of time in college. I've got two kids in college right now. I've helped them out, set classes up and stuff myself. So I do a lot with college. I'm out at the university probably at least twice a week, probably, uh, for one reason or another. I actually get merchandise there to resell. Talked about it before. There's certain times of the year you can get some really good stuff from the college. Uh, I'm not going to put it out open here, but I have talked about it on many occasions, and we've made thousands of dollars from my own university from stuff out there, but... I'll leave it at that. If, if this, there's going to be a few smart people who are going to know exactly what I'm talking about or probably have done something similar. Um, I get records from somewhere similar to that as well, too, in bulk. So anyway. Uh, let's pop down here. In fact, we're getting really late. I hate to usually go over the hour and a half mark, but let's see if I can find one more. Here's Daryl, Carolina Picks. Daryl, I did respond to you on that record, as I said. I don't know if you caught that. If I had to depend on eBay to pay all my bills, I would be homeless. I do it because I enjoy it and to fund my IRA. There you go. There you go. I, again, a lot of people can't live off what eBay is doing, even with their, even with good items if they're being hidden. So I, I, I take it seriously. When I worked in a restaurant, people talked to the managers about their life and things going on and... I don't want to bring up the story about the, the, the girl, but I, I could give you a lot more stories than I care to talk about. And I could tell you some things that really bother me, the images I can't get out of my head from some of the issues that happen in restaurants I've worked. I mean, there's been shootings in restaurants I've worked. I've seen two or three stabbings in restaurants. I've had all my windows bashed out in my car once before. I've had my tires slashed several times. I've had some really bad dents. I've had somebody punch a hole in a door. I've had people throw bottles at me in the restaurant. Um, this is at an Applebee's, mind you. Uh, so, And that's with armed security on Friday and Saturday night. So I hired two off-duty police officers um, and even invited police officers in uniform to eat. And, and fire department I did too, but they could eat in my restaurant for free, one meal, just them, uh, anytime if they sat in uniform in the restaurant. They cleaned up the restaurant. Um, I didn't have those issues because everybody would always see an officer dressed in uniform in the restaurant pretty much all the time. Uh, and the money was actually cheaper to give away the food than it was at one point to hire people to come in and be security. So it worked out for the best. But um, Yeah, Daryl's a pretty darn good guy. I, we've chatted back and forth here and there quite some time. Hey, Donald's Discoveries, how are you doing? Hey, there's Dave, Midwest Picker in the house, too. Another fellow channel. Uh, let's see here. Donald's discovers I'm building my store up while I work full-time so I can eventually just resell. Again, don't... I would never... If you've got a full-time job and it's paying your bills, I would not, I would repeat, would not quit just to do reselling unless you're making more than you were 
before and you have some money in the bank or you have no other choice. I had no other choice at the time when we first started full-time reselling. I had no job. I literally just got out of school and the, it was the bubble, the economy crashed and there was nobody hiring for anything. I might have had to been forced to move away and move you know, cross country to try and get any kind of job and I'd never see my family again. And you know, I did what we could to have money come in which ended up being reselling and I never looked back. You know, this is all me. I'm not making this up to make anybody happy either. But this is this is truthful. This is how it how how my life happened with this. I just wished I would have found this years sooner because I wouldn't have wasted so much time away from my family. I'd be so much better off as well um, in that case. So anyway, let's see. Let me just get to a couple. No, Matthew Drake, I, I'm not a fan of Ben Shapiro. I don't, you know, I'm not, would rather not be related to, to anybody like that. And it has nothing to do with the political, as, you know, I don't, I don't talk political. I don't, I'm not in either party, honestly. Um, I'm, I'm nobody in party-wise. I'm not a political person. Uh, let's see here. doing it wrong i'd like to just be able to quickly list five thousand dollars worth of merchandise depends on what you're listing of course it's easy to list if you've got the right things but for most people we list one person here as of late um, prior to the update could list we were almost to the 600 hundred dollar mark for a couple of days there with 600 dollars worth of items listed in an hour it depends on the items that you're listing obviously 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 but with the new item specifics it takes like twice as long to list anything on eBay. Instead of making it easier to get more items up on the platform, which any smart person would do like Amazon did, you would make it easier to list and you wouldn't make it harder for the buyer to find your items either. So, you know, they, they just, they just, they, they've lost their direction because of, again, my opinion, because of the idiot running eBay. And I say this a lot, I wouldn't let him run a lemonade stand for me. And seriously, that's that's my I would I don't think he's bright enough to do that in my opinion. You know, I, I've listened to the guy talk, I've seen the actions he's done. Again, opinions. This is my opinion. I'm allowed to have that. Uh, yeah, as a yes, there is always haters. I block them too. I just boot them off. I don't post their comments. Um, I'm family friendly. I don't post or try to ever cuss on my channel i never have i don't do that at the house i don't do that in public i don't do that towards other people even if i'm angry with them or something in public it's not me and you know i just block and move on you just hide them from your channel it's no big deal so people go on and type up this triad of hate for like 10 paragraphs i don't know lord how long they spent typing some of these things up but i read like a sentence and it gets deleted I don't post stuff, and I also don't post stuff when it's clearly bad information because I sure as heck don't want some other reseller reading it saying, oh, well, that guy's doing it. Let me try that out, and it hurts them. People come here for good information, so I don't post when somebody is posting obviously bad information, um, like telling people to use post office free supplies to ship not using those use them for packaging and stuff like that using them for cushioning and i don't nobody use it for what it's supposed to be used for i don't let anybody post those kind of comments at all but i think we'll let it go here we're still around 300 people 302 right now on my end 195 likes if you are enjoying the conversation please do thumb up on the 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 video here again this is this is me i'm not I'm not this is literally me if you run into me in public this is me it's not some fictitious fake person um, people call me fake which I'm just like shocked sometimes too but there's a lot of fake youtubers out there unfortunately a lot of them um, they're not resellers they're youtubers who resell to get your money for YouTube you know and that's not me I'm I'm a reseller I think anybody who's ever run into me in public and Sharon, I'm sure Sharon knows if you're in the house right now. Um, somebody, a reseller who ran into me. And um, anyway, I couldn't talk. I had my arms so full of reselling stuff that I was trying to make it to the counter. That happened a couple of days ago. But anyway, I'll let you all go. I do appreciate everybody coming on. I do honestly and sincerely appreciate all the support that everybody gives me. I, I wish you could see how much we really do appreciate it. Um, the wife says stuff about it a lot, too. 
even the kids are really surprised at all the, the f what folks help out and do stuff. But anyway, I don't want to ramble all night long. We'll let you all go. And I do honestly and sincerely, as I said, truthfully appreciate all the kind support.